Hello, everyone! I am very excited to have a lovely cast with me today, but let's all cast ourselves in this position. What would you do uh, with with uh, unlimited uh, airtime, with, with all the uh, talking available? Uh, I'm in control of the podcast today, kids. I even, I'm even controlling the stream. Uh, so... Uh, it's dark times for GMA because you're 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 dark lord and saviors here. Uh, I am Sigtal Lord, uh, commissioner for the LCUS and all around bad uh, LCUS bad boy, um, Mr. February, <laughs> uh, and I'm joined for uh, this lovely Let's Talk About the League podcast uh, by two extraordinary gentlemen. Uh, as always, the uh, rap god himself, Jeff of LCUS Caster fame. Jeff, how you doing? I'm good, Sig. How you doing? Uh, better for talking to you, bud. Better for talking to you. <laughs> uh, and we also have with us the uh, amazing top laner uh, of uh, long LCUS fame, incredibly successful career with us, old Slippery P, former Four Loco addict. Buddy, how you doing? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Thanks for having me. Oh, no time. No, no problem. No problem. Please come, come back anytime. Uh, uh, we we love quality guests. Now, uh. Folks, uh, there there is a little bit of a shadow over the LCUS right now. Uh, we we do want to take uh, a moment and announce the removal of Gale Force from the schedule. Uh, they will not be joining us in forward uh, in any games in the remainder of the split. Uh, uh, we uh, appreciate um, those that participated. Uh, they they will not be in any future matches at this point. Uh, we will discuss their prior game because uh, it happened. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, we're, we're really not looking to talk too much uh, about it. Uh, it. It's it's a bad situation. Uh, and we're, we're, we we don't want anything that has happened to have happened. None of it was intentional on our end. Uh, but given the actions of some of the members of that team, uh, we weren't able to allow them to continue playing in the LCUS. Generally, when a single player is removed from a team, uh, we, we look to, to make replacements. We try to adapt, but with us banning four players, uh, it just wasn't acceptable. Uh, here in the coming days, we'll, we, we will be releasing an announcement about uh, what's going to happen to the schedule. Now, good news is this upcoming week is completely unaffected. This would have been Gale Force's bye week. So, uh... Please, as always, and as I'm going to remind you at least 100 more times before the end of this podcast, make sure that you check in 5.30 Central Time, 6.30 Eastern for LCUS, some of the best League of Legends competitive gaming available on the internet, on Twitch, this channel right here. Uh, So, uh, gentlemen, uh, with that out of the way, what a dynamic, incredible, fantastic, and 100 other adjectives that have to do with... (laughs) splendid uh, prior week of League of Legends we had at LCUS. Uh, I I want to start with this discussion giving praise. I want to praise the coin in its eternal home, currency abundant to all in its heavenly halls. Let us sing praises in perpetuity to its dynamic value. May it flip with grace over a hundred ballerinas, dancing (laughs) to songs so holy. Our ears could not hear, or our hearts know their beauty. A perfect week! The coin predicted every game that we <laughs> experienced last week. So we will not we will not tolerate any blasphemers, okay? Uh, it predicted it 100%, and it started with a prediction of 1-1 in the White Wolf Team Blitzkrieg game. Uh, let's talk about it. What happened? Jeff, you start us out. All right. Well, um, to me, this this series was a tale of uh, of two games. Um, I mean, I guess you could say that about pretty much any one one. It sounds very basic when I put it that way, but uh, when you look deeper, both of these games were pretty much turned around by a top laner hanging in there and making a play out of a 1v3 situation in the top lane. In game one, the game was relatively even until Foe Eden... Uh, held his turret against three people and a Rift Herald in a 3v1. Held the turret just barely. Arcane Soda arrives. Um, Blitzkrieg just tried to stick around a little bit too much, got themselves low on health, ended up being a 3 for 0 up in the top lane, and Blitzkrieg didn't even get much, got themselves low on health. So 
that's where the game snowballed for me. Stelio did a pretty good job on Gnar the rest of the game, landed some good Gnar alts, trying to make the game uh, reverse its its tide, but it wasn't enough. The whole thing changed in that 3v1 where Foe Eden held to his guns, wasn't afraid of being dove, even with that rip herald and three guys staring down the barrel. And in game two, you had a pretty much reciprocation where it was a 3v3 skirmish initially, but two guys went down. Uh, on the side of Blitzkrieg. It was just Stelio on Nasus hanging onto that inner turret. Flashed forward for that 700 gold shutdown on Defoe, then ran down another one onto 400 gold. And then uh, from there, he was just too strong to deal with on the Nasus. So it was like mirror images almost in that series that created the 1-1. It was, it was crazy to watch, but it was fun. It's so reflective of some of the standings that we had released last week. Please, folks, check that episode out. Uh, uh, where we there was so much uh, between uh, uh, Mustache or Christy, you and myself, uh, of exactly where these teams should be placed. And this is just so demonstrative of that. Now, you, you, you hyped up, and correctly so, this top lane matchup that we experienced. Now, Slippery... Uh, I don't think we could get a better expert uh, in in this subject area. What what happened? Yeah, definitely. I've been playing Urgot for a really long time, even back prior to when he was reworked and everything. And I'm so glad to see him coming to the meta finally, and he's been sticking around. But uh, yeah, Foden did an extraordinary job at that 12 minute play when he absorbed the pressure from three people coming top and trying to gank him with the rift, and he was able to even bait them after after he successfully like doesn't die in the beginning of the gank he's able to move up in the lane and kind of keep them around until arcane soda and the rest of his team can come and kind of meld around him and then they turn it into a massive like influx of gold and he he did a great job up there I, I'm with you a hundred percent. This was this was so fun to watch, and it's always exciting with these changes to Nasus, how he scales much easier into the mid game. Uh, it was just fun to watch. Now, Christy did call this one uh, one to one. Uh, she she did agree with the coin. Uh, praise be to its name. Uh, we uh, we both ate some cake. Uh, ate some crow cake, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, we we even talked. I think it was during this uh, how we uh, were. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's easier. Uh, part, yeah, I think it was pre-production about how sometimes it's easier to just throw your weight one way. Uh, didn't get us the result we wanted, though. Yeah, I mean, in general, when you're, you know, it, it's tempting to always throw your weight one way, as you said, because um, in any sport, in any competition, if you win game one, uh, I haven't actually ever seen any studies on it, but you have to give yourself the idea that that gives you a better idea to win game two. But there were so many teams this week. Uh, well, I guess by so many, I mean two. But still, that lost the first game and were able to come back strong in the second game. So you got to give a shout out for that. Oh yeah, I... I would. I would definitely agree. If I could jump in real quick, yeah. that like it. It is always good to see that teams, you know, don't mental boom or anything, and they can keep their their teamwork solid and don't tilt off of each other, and they're able to come back in the second game, make some adjustments, you know communicate better kind of understand how they're working together because it was the first week obviously so it's always good to see teams be able to show their uh their good side in the face of adversity oh yeah and there's still so well much growth to go now you had said uh that teams uh making sure that they bounced back after a rough game one that's that was uh, it's uh, that's pretty much how you, i would describe the uh set two of the night, Gale Force versus Northern Storm. Uh, that game won very rough on Northern Storm, but high success from Gale Force. Uh, Shaden on Velkaz. I mean, he's lucky he brought the tentacles. He needed the extra hands to carry. Uh, he <laughs> roamed incredibly well. Uh, just so much damage output. I think if I remember the charts correctly, he dealt twice as much damage as anyone. Uh, it, two members of Northern Storm together didn't match Shaden on any combination of Northern Storm players. Uh, so, lots of damage coming out there. Uh, game two, very different experience, though. Um, uh, what what do you gentlemen think? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I guess Shaden on a different kind of a champion, going from a Velkaz, which, 
I mean, Zerath does have a lot of CC from the second game when he played Zerath, but uh, Velkaz is more of a... Uh, I just understand it as a little bit of a more CC-reliant. Like, if he throws out his W, it'll slow you a little bit, and his ult definitely brings a ton to the team fights. whereas Zerath ult is more of, like, uh, like kind of like Jin throwing in damage from a long range. Whereas, if Velkaz pops his ult, like, in the middle of a team fight, he'll slow everybody. No one's getting out of there if he has a ton of damage. Like, I saw he was 5-0 and o at, like, 25 minutes, 26 minutes. That's, like, you're going to have a ton of damage on the Velkaz. So, I think just the alternating of the picks and the Fizz coming out from uh, Northern Storm gave them a advantage of just being able to dive in, pick off a person, kind of go out, and then choose their fights from there. I think that's where the advantage went over. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, it, it was it was such a night and day. Uh, it's almost like Northern Storm picked up some, some hints from Gale Force draft in game one. The addition of that Alistair and Jinx, uh, big night and day comparison. Uh, uh, Amaya Chan played much better game two. The Fizz, the Fizz pick coming from Bacon Licious. Wow. Who would have yeah, saw that, that awesome. coming out of uh, out of a Lissandra main? I mean, folks, head to op.gg, hashtag not nad. Uh, type in Baconlicious. Look at this man's play history. Uh, he, 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 very strong Syndra uh, tradition, but you wouldn't know it. You'd think he is a Fizz main. That was such a strong <laughs> play. Uh, and WD Fan, 40k damage by the end of that game. Uh, just square That's on a lot. The- Square uh, carrying so much, just square on those skinny little uh, jink shoulders. Uh, a lot to be proud of in Chaosix. Uh, was definitely able to pr- protect and provide more. Uh, de- definitely the daddy of the bot lane during that set, uh, during that, uh, during that match. So uh, very exciting to watch. Now, that, yeah, for uh, me, oh, go ahead. Uh, for me, just game one, pretty much completely snowballed out of uh, Deformed Ape, got a good first blood on a solid gank in bot lane, and they snowballed that into a blue buff invade that pretty much cemented their lead. And then, as uh, as we've already talked about, Shaden went crazy in the mid lane off of that lead. And game two, I think that we would be remiss if we didn't talk about spicy hot memes, Elder Dragon Steel. Um, at that point, Gale Force had gotten back into the game. Uh, it wasn't even yet, but if they get that Elder Drake, who knows what happens. But... Uh, Spicy Hot Meme was able to pull it off. Uh, they had Triple Infernal at that point, I believe. So if you get an Elder Drake on top of Triple Infernal, it's pretty much impossible to lose a fight as long as your right-click button doesn't break. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> gotta got to make sure that we talk about that. Oh, most definitely. And, and I, I should really uh, have to get a lawyer for, for not mentioning uh, this. I, in Game 1, I was casting the set, folks, a uh, disclosure. Uh, <laughs> I I talked a big game about how I didn't want to see him on a Sejuani, how I want to see Spicy on a carry jungler, uh, how I wanted to see more out of him. And he delivered, uh, but on the plate that I didn't expect. So I, I will I will set my iron behind down uh, and let the big kids play. Uh, so anything else on that lovely set too? I think we got uh, that. Yeah, I think we got that. No, we're good. All right. Awesome. Uh, set three, non-lives, Team Phoenix. Uh, the uh, That was a full house. Uh, everybody predicted. Oh, uh, reminder, set two, none of us called it. Uh, nobody got <laughs> it right. Uh, except the coin. <laughs> Praise be to its except name. Except the coin, of course. Worship. <laughs> That's right. Uh, set three, non-lives, Team Phoenix. Uh, we all got it right. Uh no, no, no issues there. I, I think if if I was to describe this, this is a, a issue of pick and ban, uh, where there I don't think that non lives who, who played an incredibly strong game, um, they 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 really didn't have a team that in in the, in either game that really was was good at one particular thing. They didn't I, I, they narrowed their win conditions incredibly. Uh, now. Uh, I'll I'll get into some numbers later, but I just want to start with that thematically, is where I think some of the issues came from with non lives. Um, Phoenix, oh Lofi Senpai with that thirty nineteen meta, whoo! <laughs> uh, so much in game, 
uh, engage. We were at 30 minutes uh, in that game with Lofi Senpai before he got his first death. Uh, someone should explain to him how that passive works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but you guys, uh, what, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, for me, I, I think that you'd be remiss to not highlight the bottom lane of Phoenix. Um, they won that lane handily in both games. Um, I think Envy uh, had not just double digit, but like 20, 30 CS lead by 15 minutes or something like that. They were getting 2v2 kills, sometimes even 2v3 kills. So The server is so strong, yeah. Yeah, and, and they gave Gregor Soros Rex Thresh both games, which is one of his best champions. Mistake, yeah. Champion. <laughs> so, for me, um, you have to highlight the bot lane of Phoenix. At the same time, it's not like the rest of the team did anything wrong. Uh, Luffy Senpai on that Singe was exactly how you expect Singe to be. Annoying and yet surprisingly effective when he actually shows up to fights. You expect him to just be up there in top lane, proxying, being an and I almost cursed, uh, just being annoying. Um, but he, when he showed up uh, in that game one, last second Nexus defense, he did a lot of work. He was great on that pick. So there's a lot of things to think about with this Phoenix pick, but the most important thing is that they look well-balanced. And for me, as the only team to go 2-0 in week one, they look like the best team so far, although we haven't seen option 12 play yet. I would totally agree with that. But... uh as you, you you focus on the bot lane, me being a top laner, I focus more on that top lane, and I've played with Greatbeard Odin and Huge for years, and it just kind of hurt me to see Greatbeard Odin be relegated to playing a Scion pick. He is known as playing like such aggressive champs, in especially lately in the last year, where he's trying to make plays and do damage and be an asset to his team more than just being CC and like an immovable tank. Him having to play Cyan and the Singed, which is kind of, you know, just a wet noodle fight for the beginning, it, it, it just kind of fell flat for me a little bit, seeing him do that. Because he's, he's got the potential, definitely, to carry a team if he's put on, like, carry champions. But he just wasn't able to do it because of the team comp or what they were doing at draft. Going back to what you guys said about the picks and bands phase almost, like, determining the result of the game. It's just hard to see a Scion making too much of a difference. I mean, they did have a Tristana and a Syndra, and I think that uh, Brandana especially performed incredibly well on his Syndra in the first game. He was, like, dishing tons of damage out. And no offense to Ace or anything, but Ace got outclassed by the Syndra early on quite a bit. It's just that they couldn't keep it rolling. Kind of that uh, Greatbeard Odin seemed to that he fell a little flat on his tank roll. I I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, and we, there is this mentality right now in the top lane, which please, please explain to me. Uh, I know that right now we live in Scion and Urgot's world. And if you're not Scion, Urgot, or prior to this last patch, Aatrox, uh, you were just visiting. But it's their world. Do, do you think that there's pressure right now in terms of meta to... to be picking up this Scion? Do you, do you think that might have played into the decision-making process that Non-Lives made at that point? I could see it being pressured, because it's always good to have, you know, the classic, going back to, like, Season 5 and Season 6, like, the classic, you know, jungle, top laner, front line tanks, back lane, mid lane, dealing damage. But as we, I mean, not to compare ourselves to the LCS in North America and the other regions, a lot of people like have been like Alfari and Odawame from uh, the EU, especially have been picking like champions like Jace and Kennen and Victor. You don't always need to have your top laner be a tank. If you if you don't want to put the pressure on the rest of the team, you can have the top laner kind of absorb a little bit of pressure and do more damage for your team. Uh, but I mean, at our point in our league, I would say. There's definitely, you know, kind of a underlying pressure to for top laners to kind of like field the role of CC and tank. Okay, okay. So clarify, we need to ignore the NA curse and just accept the LCUS blessing. It's time <laughs> for us to expand these pools. I'm with you. 
Uh, now, chat uh, is is definitely agreeing with some of these points. Uh, Fat Lee, thanks for your, your participation. Uh, singed is walking CC. Uh, that that was so entertaining to watch. Uh, I'm excited to face Phoenix this weekend. Getting ahead of us, Fat Lee. Calm down. Make sure you type out again when we get to that point. Uh, and <laughs> I believe they could have won that game if they grouped, uh, probably. Uh, that I think that there is an outcome. Uh, there is a world where they won that game. So I agree with definitely, you. definitely. Yeah, I agree that, with that, yeah, that goes to a point I always want to say though. When you talk about like what's meta for the LCS or or Europe, whatever they're called now, um, right? LEC, <laughs> you, LEC, LEC, LEC. Um, it's it's never completely equatable to what we do here in the LCUS, <gasps> or you know, to what you do in solo queue. You know, <laughs> anywhere between like gold through silver through plat whatever um you know you you play what you're good at and and you try to design a team composition around it of course but if you can play a top lane carry insanely well into ergot if the other guy's just playing ergot because it's meta then you're gonna beat him and you're gonna beat him hard so for sure yeah that's that's what i love about the lcus is that it doesn't box people into just meta picks. It has such a diversity. League of Legends has, what, like 130 champions now? Uh, like, I think it's like above 150. Sure. Yeah. I think it's above 150, yeah. Jeez. So, yeah. So, you can, you know, you can find a way to beat all those meta champions. And if it happens to be a champion that you are unbelievably comfortable with, you know, in and out, up and down, black and white, then just do it wreck them and carry the game that's what i love about this format well you you heard it here folks uh most exciting update to the equation it is eu is less than na is less than lcus you can write that down that's gospel <laughs> straight out the straight out the mouth of the rap god himself uh jeff uh well well folks do, do you know how we get quality content like this slippery p do you know I'm sorry, could you say that again? Do you, do you know how we get quality content like that that you're participating in right now? I mean, everyone's just got to keep doing no, what they're Sid, doing. I really don't know how we get such great content. <laughs> well, Slippery P, let me tell you. It's because Twitch Prime subs. Twitch Prime <laughs> subs keep the light on. It, it lets us know that you're engaged and you want to know more. Uh, you're, you're, you want to continue to participate. Uh, it'll, it facilitates us and allows us to be able to provide exciting graphics like the one on your screen. Uh, acceptable. Maybe not fantastic, but acceptable audio. So please throw us that Twitch Prime sub. You get one free with every Amazon account. Uh, and if, if if you've already used it, we appreciate it. Uh, we're worth the money. Just get the sub. Uh, well, folks, let's hop in directly. Uh, we're 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 running near on time, but this is too important a subject not to cover. Uh, week two matchups. This is some real quality ish getting ready to go down, gentlemen. Set one, F Team Phoenix versus Option 12. I think this is a potential... Whoa, whoa! Uh, but blow the horns. Blow the horns. Crank it up to 11. <laughs> uh, this is a potential battle of, according to our ours and the community rankings, this is a first place matchup. And, and after um, having a stroke, uh, after Phoenix's week one, what is... What can we look forward to? What's going to happen? And this is also a battle, a rematch of Season 1 championships of Shaken Not Stirred, who was in the top lane Season 1, uh, Split 1, versus Ace, who lost with the uh, original Triple Strike Squad. Uh, this, 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 this is going to be big. It's going to be something, kids. It's going to be something. Spicy. Very spicy. <laughs> well, what, what are our thoughts? Uh... Slippery, tell me thoughts. Well, personally, I'm glad that I don't have to go up to it against Shaken because uh, when I back when I played in Split One, gosh, I don't even remember what team I was on, but I had to play against him in top lane, and he was a class on the opposite sides of the maps here because you look at uh, at slippery and prowler who slippery was just praising you know i i talked last week about how i think prowler could be the most influential player in the lcus with how he jungles how aggressive he is 
Um, and so can Phoenix uh, stand up to that aggression? Can they can they counter it? Can they hold off against it with Lofi and TARDIS? And then you've got Evil Envy, uh, Envy the Serpent, excuse me, and Gregor Soros on the bot side. We know that Fat Lee is a great League of Legends player. How great of an AD carry is he? We've seen him be an incredible jungler. Is he a great AD carry? We saw Phoenix's bot lane really you know, forgive me for saying so, but dominate uh, nine lives in, in week one. So it'll be up to who wins each side of the map and by more. Because uh, I think option 12, their top side of the map between top and jungle looks really good. I think Phoenix's from the bottom side looks really good. In the mid lane, I think they look relatively even. So how do they allocate their resources? How do they snowball their advantages when they get them? Um, as you can probably tell from my uh, incredibly waffling dialogue, I'm giving this a 1-1. One, one. So, yeah, I'm excited, though. Absolutely. Any veterans in here? Um, Ashaway, Defending Champion, Arcane Soda, Primidin. Um, I think that's pronounced Primidin. Did we finally settle that? I don't know. I'll message him again later. I have no idea. <laughs> but um, regardless, you know, even the, the less familiar people have been proving themselves so just with how nine lives yes uh, i agree with you slippery that they could have won game one against phoenix um but they did fall behind early in that game so i wouldn't say that they were unlucky to lose it i would say that they were lucky to even be in it eventually um, i mean but if i re remember correctly weren't both nexuses open at one point in that game they were, but yeah. I think I mean Phoenix had the advantage throughout the game until right, uh, right. the sneaky Baron right. and stuff. So I would say nine sure. lives, like yeah, they they almost won that game, but they didn't prove to me that they are uh, a cohesive great team yet. I I was impressed by what I saw from Brandana. Uh, I will agree with you on that, particularly on the Cinder game. But for me, White Wolf with a veteran like Primidin, uh, whatever, um, dude with Dude in the mid lane, who is a veteran, uh, who has been in the LCS for a long time. We've seen him be able to absorb pressure, have to play supportive champions a lot, like Karma, Oriana, and still succeed. I think that White Wolf, um, in my opinion, Nine Lives as players, Brandana, and in my opinion, White Wolf has the tools to absorb that and exploit the other parts of the map. So I go 2-0 White Wolf. Slippery, round us out. What's your opinion? Yeah, uh... <sighs> I can't, I can't disagree with Euge. I mean, Euge, and I think that maybe if they alter a bit, because I think he played Nunu and uh, Trundle in these la this last week. I think if they put him on more of a aggressive champ that can pull off ganks early, if they get an early league, they'll be able to snowball it. So I'm gonna go one one. Although you you definitely can't count out a uh, uh, Foden. I think that's what, I forgot how you say his name. Foe Eden or whatever. I, he's a really <laughs> good top laner. <laughs> I have him written down as one of the two top laners that I need to worry about personally. So if they get him on the air gut or I can't remember the second character that he played, but I think that he can definitely get on top of uh, Greybeard Odin. If Greybeard Odin still has to play his tank duty items and our champions, so he played Trundle in the second game. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I yeah, I'm gonna go one one just because I have faith in uh mm -hmm. in nine lives. So, well, I, I tell you who else has faith. Uh, blessed be its name, the coin. Uh, Give it to two zero. <laughs> so, uh, this, all right, this, coin this could be the putting it to the miracle. test. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, folks that are watching, I am so sorry. No idea why it keeps booting us off. Uh, uh, I use this connection to stream pretty re regularly, so uh, no no idea what's happening. Uh, make sure you check out our YouTube, throw out a subscribe. Uh, we will try to collapse this down into one episode, all these uh, different stream bits. So uh, <laughs> sorry for any inconvenience. But we're live right now, uh, and I want to talk about probably one of the livest things on Earth, Northern Storm into Blitzkrieg. Uh Jeff, what 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 does Northern Storm need to do to win this game, or what does Blitzkrieg need to do to continue the dominance that they showed in that game too? Uh, Northern Storm 
it's it's oh man it's like a battle of attrition uh based on what we saw from these two teams in week one because they both lost game one and then they were behind to start game two and then sort of found the other team overreach overplay in a side lane and the game completely changed in game one or excuse me for uh for blitzkrieg it was stelio finding those couple nasus kills the shutdowns in the top side on the side of um northern storm it was bacon wishes coming down with that fizz cleaning up uh you know an overreach in the bot side diving behind the tri brush so both of these teams honestly i was not that impressed with in week one uh they both didn't look that proactive in the early game they got some leads off of proact or uh, reactive plays excuse me, reactive plays, and then we're able to snowball off that. Uh, but even then, the games they won were not blowouts. They were relatively well, snowball close. Northern that, Storm uh, let Gale Force back into that game too until it took a pretty awesome steal from Spicy Hot Meme to secure it. So for me, both of these teams, it's going to be interesting to see which one decides to actually make the proactive moves early on. And because of that reason, I'm going 1-1 because I'm not too confident in either team taking that approach consistently. I can get behind that. Your thoughts, Slippery? Uh, I'm, I would kind of agree that neither team had a great showing in the first week. That they both kind of had their problems to kind of shift around. But... For me, personally, the game where Baconlicious played Fizz, I personally think that they put him on an assassin mid, and they play aggressively with the help of a spicy hot meme, like ganking him and then maybe invading even the enemy jungle. I could see Northern Storm going a 2-0. But, I mean, I don't want to go along with the Blitzkrieg curse, because if I remember correctly, Blitzkrieg has not done great with their namesake in the last few splits, but uh, I do respect Chop Suey and uh, Stelio Hantos actually had a few good plays that I saw, I saw in top lane, but I am actually going to say that Northern Star is going to 2-0. Okay, okay. Uh, I tend to agree with you, uh, and I only agree with you because of Jeff's logic. Neither team performed well game one. Uh, I don't know if there's an issue with the ignition switch or something in, in those models, but uh, maybe I, I think when it comes down to neither team wanting to perform at that time, uh, I, I think that it's going to be uh, Northern Storm will probably activate first. I think that there is much more consistency if, if with a spicy hot meme. I think he's the deciding factor. Uh, I, oh, definitely agree, yeah. I think he's going to be the one that, that decides that. Um, both teams have incredibly competent bot lanes. Uh, mid lane matchup is going to be fantastic to watch, but I think Spicy's got just the smallest edge, and with his aggressive play, he'll activate them faster. Uh, and the, the coin agrees with us. Um, <laughs> we, we will be 2-0 on that. Um, so... The, the coin being oh, incredible. Oh, no, I disagree with the coin. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a rough week for us next week, Jeff. Uh, we'll we'll oh, have to see man. what happens. Uh, well, gentlemen, I want to give you the opportunity to close this out with uh, some, some final thoughts. Uh, Jeff, as always, expand our minds. <laughs> well, I just want to say uh, week one was hype. It was exciting. We even saw a couple... Uh, I guess I couldn't call them base races, but close nexus takes. It was um, it was awesome. It was awesome. It's exactly what we've come to expect from the LCUS, and I just hope it continues in week two. I couldn't agree more. Uh, gotta get lucky uh, in chat. Got gotta let gotta bring this up as your final point, Jeff. Uh, gotta get lucky. Playoffs aren't great? Question mark. Playoffs? Question mark. Uh, Blitzkrieg. Uh, did did very well and made it to playoffs last split. They broke the curse. Um, oh man! Uh, so, Jeff, what what do you what do you think about that? Uh, do you, do you think Slippery needs to to saddle up and get some of his crow with us? Or? <laughs> well, I think uh, I mean if we're talking about last split, I mean it's it's honestly um, 
no offense to the folks who were on Blitzkrieg last split, but it's almost a cautionary tale to all the teams right now, uh, particularly Phoenix, who started 2-0. Blitzkrieg, uh, to, to bash the cliche over the head, they came out firing really fast in split four. For those who remember, they looked like the best team for a few weeks, and then they really stalled out and lost in first round of playoffs. So if we're talking about playoffs, um, playoffs, don't, don't, don't be thinking about that right now. Think about winning as many games as you can, playing as well as you can, honing your game. And I mean, we're down to six teams now. So two thirds of the teams in the league make playoffs. So just be in the top two thirds and then just be ready to perform when it counts. Uh I'm I'm with you 100%. Got to get lucky. Uh, last fireback we're going to give him. Got, uh, has never missed playoffs, boys. Been predicted to miss three splits in a row. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Come back. Week three, Lucky. Come back to this chat. We'll be waiting. Uh, uh, now, uh, Slippery, uh, you, you go ahead. Give us your closing thought for this evening. Uh, yeah. So, I think that... Week one was definitely fun to watch, and even though Nine Lives did get beat two zero, I thought that their first game, especially, was competitive. And it's I always love to see teams, you know, as lame as it sounds, go one one. It shows that everybody's trying their best and trying to compete to their top level. So I'm looking forward to the same in week two. Uh, well, almost the same because I just want Option Twelve, obviously, to go two zero over <laughs> Phoenix and. Uh, <laughs> To destroy, but I always like uh, watching teams compete, and especially with this top lane meta that we have going right now, with uh, the a lot of focus on the Urgot and the Aatrox picks and the Scions and stuff like that. It'll it'll, it'll be fun to see what people unpack for us in uh, the top lane for week two. Uh, that is that is very. Interesting to point out, uh, folks, uh, big news, top laner concerned about top lane. Uh, more to <laughs> uh, Slippery, you have been a fantastic guest. It'll be a crime if you don't come back. Yeah, well that. done. Well done, sir. Well Thanks done. for having me. Thanks uh, for having me. No problem. We will make sure that if, if, if it opens up again that we give you the opportunity. Uh, we'll think about it. I'll talk, I'll talk about you to Jeff <laughs> afterwards. Uh, but, <laughs> folks, this has been another fantastic week where we talked about the league. Uh, this upcoming week, we are going to have content coming out on our YouTube page, Check that out. Plus, there may or may not be the first episode of this Splits 1v1 with Commissioner Sig coming up this week. Sign up for that. <laughs> we'll be going out here in the next few days. So uh, bring your A game, or at least A game, because I know you ain't got none. Uh, <laughs> folks, thank you. This has been another fantastic week of talking about the league. Yes, Macy, Sophia, we are done. Everybody have a pleasant day. <laughs> night, guys. Good night. <laughs>